Hey guys, so I had a friend ask me to show you guys how to eat a mangosteen and I thought that was a fun idea. So Molly, challenge accepted. And I actually think I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to eat some other fruits that I had lying around in the apartment that were ready to eat. So I figured, why not? So with the mangosteen, basically I had mentioned in um, my food haul or fruit haul video that when you're buying a mangosteen, you want to make sure that it gives with uh, gentle pressure and then you know it's ready to go. If it's hard, you won't be able to open it. So basically what you're going to do is this is the top where it was attached to the tree and then at the bottom there's these little segments and you're just going to press it in. I'll show you what that looks like. So it pressed in, it kind of collapsed a bit and basically once you press it in you can just rip it open and that is what the mangosteen looks like on the inside. It kind of, um, a friend the other day was saying that it reminded them of garlic bulbs because it kind of comes in these little sections that, wait, there we go, kind of looks like garlic. But the flavor is nothing like garlic at all. It is really, really creamy. It just breaks apart in your mouth. You barely even have to use um, your teeth. You can kind of even just squish it up with your tongue. And it's just a really, it's super sweet, but it's a light flavor. And I think this is really one of those flavors in a fruit that would be appealing to almost everyone. Everyone has different tastes, so of course not everybody, everybody will like it, but it's definitely kind of a universally appealing flavor that as far as tropical fruits go, this would definitely be one that if you saw it and it happened to be right, I would go ahead and buy it because it's really low risk as far as taste goes. Mm. Mm. And some of the segments have these seeds in them, so don't eat that, just spit it out. Mm. Another little interesting fact about mangosteen when you're buying it, it doesn't affect the flavor at all, but on the bum, the little star shaped thing, if you count out how many segments there are, so this one has six segments, that's how many of these little garlic pieces you're going to get inside of the fruit. So some of them only have like two or three segments, and I think the most we've seen so far is seven segments. Just a fun fact. Next, I'm going to show you guys how to eat a rambutan. Now, in nature, I've seen monkeys eat these. They actually just stick them in their mouth, and they bite down with their teeth to remove the skin to get to the fruit on the inside, but I'm gonna actually use my knife because I'm sorry, look at this thing. I am not gonna put that in my mouth. <laughs> but we could eat this in nature without the help of a tool. Still meant for human consumption, as far as I'm concerned. So I just sliced around the fruit. I just kind of scored it. I didn't go all the way in. And I'll try to give you a close up of how I sliced it around, just in a circle. So then you can just kind of twist it and pull it off. And then this is the fruit on the inside. Kind of has the texture of a grape almost, um, but a little bit chewier than a grape would be. Um, and that would kind of be the closest common fruit that I could um, relate it to. Although it's a completely different type of sweetness, um, grapes tend, well, I guess even by variety, because some grapes are sweeter and some grapes are less sweet. Um, yeah, once again, to me, it's kind of more of a mild sweetness. Sometimes they're sour if they're not completely ripe, so you definitely want to make sure that they're red when you buy them and not, um, sometimes they've got like a greenish yellow hue to them instead. Mm. The flavor is a little bit citrusy. Um, but you know, with a completely different texture, which throws it off. And it's kind of funny because when you peel, there's a seed on the inside. Sorry, that's what I'm doing. So when you peel away the seed, I'm not going to eat the seed, but I think they might be edible. I don't eat them though. But if you look at it, it is, um, looks kind of like an almond. And I've noticed when you watch monkeys eat them, that they just swallow the entire fruit. It seems like they barely even chew. So I think they are adjusting these, but they would be coming straight out the other end because they barely chew on them. But 
little bits of the skin of the seed kind of stick to the fruit when you're eating it. And it affects the flavor of the fruit, obviously. It kind of reminds me of eating almond skins, just like the nut itself reminds me of eating an almond. Um, I don't mind it. Um, Duncan actually has told me that he's not a big fan of the flavor of the skin on there. But um, I kind of like it. I think it's good. Next up is a custard apple or a sugared apple. Um, in the US, the only thing I've personally ever been able to get were cherimoyas, and they are actually grown in the US from California. And I actually prefer the taste of cherimoyas. These are in the same family as cherimoyas, they're still really good. And these are ready to eat when they are soft enough that you can just kind of stick your fingers into where the top is and literally just pull it apart. So when you can pull it apart, it's ready to go. If you can't pull it apart, it's not ready to eat. <laughs> um, so that is super simple. And this just tastes delicious. It kind of has... Um, See, the reason I like cherimoya is because the flavor is actually very similar, but cherimoya is really um, soft and more custard-like on the inside that you can take a uh, spoon and actually scoop it. Where this, I just actually eat it by, um, I'll keep ripping it into small segments until I get a small enough segment that I can just um, bite into it. Now, when you're eating these, always spit out the seeds. They're um, toxic, and if you chew one open, it is supposed to be, um, you know, it's bad enough for you that it could hurt you pretty severely or even kill you. So just spit them out. I mean, they're perfectly harmless otherwise, and they're really easy to spit out because they actually, they don't really stick to the fruit that much. Like, you can, like, peel them out very quickly. Like, I just pulled out three really fast. And there are a lot of seeds in there. I usually just go ahead and bite it and then spit out the seeds because, yeah, they don't hold on to the flesh of the um, fruit, so they're easy to remove. Now, the flavor of this almost, remi it almost reminds me of bubble gum because it's fruity, but it tastes like a lot of different fruits kind of mushed together. So it's like pineapple um, reminds me of a pina colada almost because it's like creamy as well like you've mixed some coconut and some orange in there maybe hints of strawberry but the thing is is it tastes like all of these fruits but it doesn't taste like any of them either because it's like literally all of them if you blended it together and then turned it into a whole separate fruit it's kind of like a fruit ambrosia it's super super delicious now these, when I eat them, I don't like getting too close to the skin personally, because when you get closer to the skin, like you could actually peel the skin off of the fruit. You see it kind of gets like a grainy texture, and it just doesn't taste as good. So I don't eat that part. <laughs> Next up, passion fruit. Um, now, in the US and the UK, when you buy these, they are usually very smooth, more like this section. And they can be um, usually maybe a darker purple, kind of like the color of an eggplant. Um, and they could be this color as well. But um, you want to wait for them to get wrinkly. So if you buy one and it's not wrinkled, you can um, put it out with some apples or bananas if you have them. Because the ethylene gases that they put off will um, help it to get wrinkled faster. And to eat these, bring out the knife again. Just slice it in half. That is the inside of the fruit, and just, you could slurp it with your tongue, you could use a spoon to eat it. Now this has definitely more of a sweet, sour flavor, and this is a very, very, very tropical flavored fruit. It's really delicious, and to me this has a stronger flavor, which, um, I just love it, but I don't actually usually eat them like this. You can eat them like this, of course, but my favorite way to eat them 
is actually I like to take about one or two passion fruit and mix them into my smoothies because I really find that it um, doesn't take a lot. Like I said, it just takes one or two to change the flavor of your entire smoothie. And when I say one or two, I'm making two liter size smoothies. So a two liter smoothie, one or two passion fruit. So if you were making a smoothie for yourself, just a smaller smoothie, like, you know, a glass is worth, definitely one is enough. Um, you know, one could make two glasses full for you and a friend or a partner. But I love taking these and mixing them with, um, you know, bananas, mangoes, papaya, whatever you have lying around, strawberries, you know, just make like a fruit medley and throw this in and it makes the entire smoothie taste completely tropical. You'll feel like you're on an island. You know, I come from England right now. I live in England and before that I was in New Jersey, so it's the East Coast, definitely not tropical. And drinking these smoothies really helped to make my diet feel more tropical, even though I was eating like really plain and basic fruits. So last, I have a dragon fruit. And if anybody remembers the other day when I was showing um, dragon fruit in my fruit haul, these were much crisper looking, like they were super rubbery. And now they've kind of wilted down. So I think it's ready to eat. And I'm just going to slice it in half. And that's what it looks like on the inside. Sometimes they're red on the inside. I don't know what the difference is besides just the color. I kind of feel like it's like how you have, you know, red apples and green apples where it might be a slightly different variety, but, you know, it's still a dragon fruit. <laughs> um, and I like to eat these with a spoon. Although you can also... Um, just peel the skin away like that and bite into it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this method versus the spoon method. I do normally just spoon it out, but I'll show you this method because this to me shows you more how we would be eating it in nature. And um, the little seeds in here really remind me a lot like the seeds that you would get in a kiwi. Um, because they have that same like little tiny crunchiness and actually the texture of the fruit also reminds me of a kiwi except it's not sour at all like a kiwi I'm just talking about texture itself where you've got that really soft fruit that breaks apart easily and if you see closely like it really does have the texture of a kiwi so that's how you can imagine it but the flavor to me is very much like a cucumber but a little bit sweeter than a cucumber and I've noticed that whenever I eat these, the first bite doesn't taste sweet at all. But as I keep going, it gets sweeter and sweeter. It's almost like um, the flavor builds as you eat it. So it's actually more like the more of them I eat in one meal, the more I enjoy them, which is really fun. And, you know, I like, I'm really trying to eat a lot of different fruits while we're here to get a lot of variety in my diet because when we're back home we kind of eat a lot of the same things. I mean we do get variety over the year but in general you know bananas and dates like everyone else. So it's really nice to just eat the variety that even though it's not my favorite in the beginning like when you first start eating it because it's almost like if it doesn't taste sweet why do you keep eating it? Well I keep eating it because I want the variety and it tastes good. It's just not amazing but it, I've noticed because I can afford to buy more of them here than I could back home that they get sweeter as you eat them which I think is really awesome and Duncan <laughs> over there he actually came up with a good idea the other day he was saying that we could you know put them in salad because it reminds me of a cucumber I was like yeah that's a really good idea because it would pair really well because it's got a little bit more of a sweetness but it's not super sweet so I just think it would taste really nice in a salad so I'm going to try that and if it's amazing maybe I'll share it with you have a great day guys bye